So our next show is uh, by none other than my co-host, Rob Timek. Uh, he didn't give us a description because it all says it in the title. He's going to be doing a one-man show titled, Seven Highly Effective Habits to Make a One-Man Show. <laughs> so this is written by Rob and featuring Rob. Take it away, Rob. Point number one. <laughs> 
<laughs> a WTF beginning. <laughs> See, one day shows tend to run into a certain amount of consumer resistance. When the audience first walks in, they're wondering, is one guy really going to be able to pull this off? Is this actually going to be an entertaining event? Or is it just going to be some sort of ego fest? The answer to all those questions is yes. So what you need to do, though, is you need to wrong foot the audience a bit as you start the show. Throw them off. Maybe alienate them slightly, but intrigue them at the same time. So it sort of removes that preconception. You can even do something like take advantage of the fact that stage hands get way too high before a show and are completely useless. So you should just bring your sets and your props up yourself, and then maybe do some weird timing with the music. See what I did just there? Point number two. <laughs> Props and sets. Use as few as possible. Yes, if you ever go into a one-man show and you see a huge set with lavish costumes and elaborate props, turn the hell back around and get out. No, wait. First, find the producer, punch them, and then get the hell out. Just don't tell them I told you to do that. I have enough lawsuits as is. So what you want to do instead is bring up the most minimalistic set and props as you can get. Say, for instance, a chair, a table, and a bag of stupid props. See what I did there again? Okay, okay. I'll stop. I keep putting elements of a good one man show into my show before I actually present those elements to you. And then I get all smug about it. No doubt the smugness is getting tiresome for you. It doesn't get tiresome for me, though. <laughs> I could be smug all day. But yeah, well, if you use as few set pieces and props as possible, your imagination takes over and does the rest for you. Just a few simple gestures can really create a cool atmosphere and visual that you make rather than me. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll explain as I drive in my speedboat. Simple props and sets is 
always the best way to go with a one-man show. Now, there are specialized props that are worth bringing up. But those props generally should have nothing to do with the show whatsoever. They should just be there as a cheap sight gag or maybe a cult cultural reference of some sort. For instance, you could play some Star Wars music and randomly bring out a lightsaber just because it's funny. <laughs> See what I did there one more time? Okay, I'll stop for real. Point number three. Sound effects. Use as many as you can. Now when it comes to props and sets, keep it minimal. But flood your one minute play with sound effects. It helps with enhancing those visuals. Here's an example. I'll play a scene first without sound effects, and then again with you. You'll see the difference. The defensive line on the front porch was not only broken, it was destroyed. Johnson was the second last one. He didn't open fire until the horde was getting too close. A biter bit him in the neck and ripped his jugular open. And as he fell to the ground, he looked back to me and said, you're the last one, kid. Get to the back porch and tell them what happened. Before I could say anything back, the horde was already on him. So I ran into the living room as fast as I could. I, I hated the fact that the back porch was going to have to defend both fronts, but what choice did we have? But as I ran into the living room, the most horrific sight greeted me. The horde was already flooding in from the back porch. That defensive line had fallen too. I turned back around the way I came, but the walkers or the biters or Whatever we're supposed to call them, they were coming through from that way, too. I tried to fire off, but I remembered I was out of ammo. I was hoping the back porch would have some spare bullets. As the swarm converged around me, I had the strangest final thoughts. I thought, why don't we actually give these things a real name, rather than some stupid nickname? Maybe something with, like, its roots in West African voodoo culture. Or maybe it starts with a seldom-used consonant found near the end of the alphabet. Ah! Okay, let's just do a part of that, but this time with sound effects. So I raced back into the living room to let the back porch know what was going on. A battle on two fronts wasn't going to be good. But what choice did we have? But as I ran into the actual living room, <laughs> as I ran into the actual living room, the most horrific sight greeted me. The horde was already coming through. The back porch had fallen. I turned back the way I came. The fighters and walkers were coming through that way too. I tried to open fire, but I was out of ammo. I was hoping the back porch would have some spare bullets. This was it. I was doomed. I'll skip doing the why don't we call them zombies joke. I think you got it the first time. <laughs> of course, we now get to point number four. Music cues. Use them as much as possible, too. Now, you may be asking yourself, wait a minute. Sound effects cues and music cues, that's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Or you might even be asking yourself, does he realize how much of a dork he looks like right now? But the answer to both is no. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the case of sound effects, you're using them to enhance visuals. But in the case of music, you're using it to enhance mood or tone. Here's another example. I am now playing very serious sounding music. Talking to you all. Very serious sounding tone. It's not much of a musical effect. Just a sustained note here and there. I'm not even talking about anything all that serious. <laughs> but don't I sound 
sound so dramatic right now because of my serious music. I could even tell you a joke right now and it would sound serious. Did you hear about the guy in the car accident? He lost the entire left side of his body. He's all right now. <laughs>
we take someone from the audience and get them to come up on stage. <laughs> come on, Laffy Kathy. <laughs> Your turn. Watch your step. And what's your name? Malena. Malena. Everybody say hi, Malena. Malena, say hi to each individual person back. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> she took me seriously. That's great. So here we go. We've got an audience volunteer. We can have some fun with that. We need to incorporate her into the show. And she's already starting to feel painfully awkward. She's as red as her skirt. <laughs> Malena, this is what you're going to do. This is one of the fun things you can do. You can have them say a line of dialogue. So you just look that over, Malena. Remember, you need to deliver loudly, project, right? I'll say, hey, Malena, how's it going? That'll be your cue, and you say what's written on there. Ready? Okay. Hey, Malena, how's it going? I am saying a line of dialogue in a one-man show. Give a round of applause!
Well, so that's it for the first half of our show again. Uh, we could just give a round of applause for Rob.